This video kicks off a new series on how to update a bathroom on a budget. And we're going to start by replacing this old towel rack with a custom-built industrial farmhouse one. Let's get started. It's now time to retire this old towel rack. Right now, only one towel feels welcome, but we're going to change that. The first thing I would recommend when beginning any project like this is first remove the old items before buying any materials. For example, if I had not first removed the broken towel rack, I would not have noticed this mass of paint that Daryl left, and my original planned materials would not have fit. For materials, I went with this water-treated 1x6 pine wood and cut it to be 36 inches long or 3 feet. You'll notice the purple spray paint on the end, which identifies it as scrap wood. Scrap wood like this is discounted 70 to 90% off, and I got two six foot lengths for about three US dollars. To remove the purple paint, I went with a P80 grit sandpaper, and it easily came off. To avoid making a mess in the office, I decided to take it to the garage to finish prepping the wood. Make sure to clean all sides of the wood, even though one side will be showing. It's better to be cautious and prep all of the wood, in case you later find a defect on the side that you want to use. The P80 grit sandpaper easily took off the paint, and now I'm going to use a 220 grit to smooth out the rest of the wood. Make sure to get all surface areas, including the corners and sides. Once the entire board has been sanded, take a clean cloth and wipe all the dust. Once that's been cleaned, go over the wood and check that everything is smooth. Now the board has been prepped, I decided to use this Verathane Jacobean wood stain. I thought this color was great as there's less red in it and it's more of a smoky dark wood feel. Because it's very hard to lift stain, I recommend getting a scrap piece of wood and testing out the color first. The color looked great, so now we're ready to stain the wood. I used a lint-free flour sack cloth and found that it worked best to fold it so that the remainder part doesn't drag on what you've already stained. Apply evenly and go up and down with the grain until you've covered the full board. The more stain you use, the darker the wood will come out. On this project, I went with about two coats of stain. Make sure to apply on all sides, including the top and the ends. The end pieces worked best when I applied it like a sponge and let it soak up the stain for a darker look. Once I got it to the right color, I set it aside to dry. While the wood was drying, I went inside and measured out the studs so I could have an idea of where to put the holes in the wood. Most studs will be 16 or 24 inches apart. All right, after about three hours, the stain is dried, and I think the wood looks fantastic. The stain made even these minor flaws look great. Now that the wood is dry, I need to measure out where I'm going to put the hangers. I cut this length of wood to be 36 inches, and these hangers that I found on Amazon are about one inch wide. These hangers that I found were much more sturdy than expected and really matched the rustic farmhouse look I was going for. A tip I found when putting on something like this is to eyeball it first and then use a ruler to make it exact. I originally was going to use four hangers, but decided five would fit better. I measured the hangers by taking four inches from the right and left side, then placed the remaining hangers seven inches apart at 25, 18, 11, and four inches. Now that I had the width measured, I had to put them at the right height and place them at two and a quarter inches down. I screwed down the first hanger, but skipped the second and fourth for now. Again, I placed it at two and a quarter inches down from the top, as the top part of the hanger is longer than the bottom, making it feel more centered. Now the reason why I skipped the second and fourth hanger is that I'm going to place a grabber screw underneath them. The screws will hold the board to the wall and will be hidden underneath the hangers. For a quick tip, using a 1 16th drill bit made things a lot easier to screw in. With the hangers in place, we're ready to put it on the wall. I had previously located the studs and lined the board up to match where the screws would go. Using a two inch grabber screw, I was able to secure the board. Before I placed the second screw, I grabbed a level and made sure everything was set. Everything was level, so I put in the second screw and secured it. With the board now on the wall, I was able to put on the remaining hangers. The towel board is now secured to the wall, but before we're finished, I'm going to show you how to remove the old nails and patch them up. Taking a blunt edge like the back of a knife, I can pry out the anchors, exposing a hole in the drywall. To patch the remaining hole, I get some of this dry deck spackling paste. 
and cover the hole, making sure to get some inside to help anchor it down. I applied putty to any remaining holes that needed it. Now this is the best paste as it goes on pink, but turns white when it's all dry. Place a piece of paper to catch the dust, then use a heavier grit sandpaper to sand it down. Once that's done, you can brush off the dust and paint the wall. With the paint dry, we've now finished our custom-built industrial farmhouse towel rack. So now let's add up the total cost of our project. It was $1.16 per hook, totaling $5.80, $4.50 for the stain, and about $3 for the scrap wood. The total cost was less than $14 and adds to the other inexpensive changes we've made to this room. I'll have those videos linked below. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.